And he used the raise your hand function. Uh, he'll open with a with an opening statement. Use the raise for your hand function for questions. Coach, go ahead. Um, yeah, well, um, first of all, um, I'm feeling fine. So you don't need to worry about me. Um, and just to make it clear, uh, I'll be evaluated by the medical staff later in the week and they'll make a determination as to when I can come back. Uh, but I don't anticipate any problems um, in being able to coach the game this week. Um, so, uh, you know, just thoughts on the last game. Um, you know, something that I think we all need to wear of is the Auburn game is usually the last game of the season. Uh, you win the game, it's, you know, a good season. Uh, and you kind of move on to the next thing. But that's certainly not the case this year. Um, and, you know, our players need to really understand what the challenges are ahead. Uh, we did a lot of good things in the game Saturday. I thought the energy level and uh, the way the players are out there played hard, uh, played with a lot of toughness. It's always a very physical game. Uh, we did some really good things, made some explosive plays on offense and um, played okay on defense. But, you know, we had our spots where – you know, we didn't finish real well in the fourth quarter, had some missed tackles, uh, left some opportunities in the passing game and the running game on the field, um, you know, offensively. But I, I think whenever you play a game, regardless of how good or bad the victory um, or defeat might be, there's always things that, you know, you're looking for relative to how we can get better. And uh, I think the big thing is, is it's fairly obvious when we execute and do things well, we have success. Uh, when we, we don't execute things exactly like they're supposed to be done, uh, and it can only be one guy that has to, you know, miss the execution, uh, then things don't work out quite as well. So, um, you know, that's something that uh, we need to continue to try to focus on so that we can continue to grow and have a kind of consistency and performance. So it's not about doing things right occasionally. It's a right. It's about doing things right, you know, all the time uh, and getting it right on a consistent basis. Um, you know, it's great for Mac Jones to be the SEC Offensive Player of the Week. Um, so um, you know, obviously we're getting together today and uh, going to watch the film and um, going to do walkthrough type practice today. Um, to um, try to get started on LSU, who is a, you know, very, very talented team. Um, you know, these guys have looked exceptionally uh, good at times this year. They're very capable. They have lots of good players on both sides of the ball. Um, very explosive on offense. Um, got really good receivers, a couple of good running backs. I know they've done some rebuilding you know, with their team this year because of how many players they lost from last year's national championship team. But, you know, these guys uh, really played well last week at Texas A&M. Their defense has really played better and better as the season has worn on. And uh, they've got some very talented players on defense uh, in the secondary and in the front seven as well. Um, you know, skill guys on offense are, are really good. A couple young receivers are really playing well. Eric Gil Gilbert is very, very good tight end. Uh, these guys have really good team speed, so they're always really good on special teams. They've got good specialists. So um, this is a, a team that's very capable of being uh, as good as anybody we played all season long because of the talent they have on their team. So uh, I think our team has to be uh, very well prepared, you know, for what we need to uh, be able to do to execute against some very, very good players. Okay, guys, we'll get started with John Zener of the Associated Press. Uh, yeah, Nick, um, glad to hear you're still feeling well and everything. But what, how is how has your secondary improved and evolved um, as this season has gone along? Well, I, th I think they've improved and gotten better. You know, obviously, you know we're playing two guys that are freshmen. You know, out of the six that play uh, the most, uh, Demarco Helms has alternated in some. Uh, as a spare part and has done a nice job. Uh, I think the two corners have, you know, played pretty consistently well for us this year. Uh, I think the, the young players coming on, Jordan Battle, you know, played some last year. He's definitely, you know, improved and played better and better. So uh, I, I think it's just a maturing process of the young players and 
the players realizing the importance of doing things correctly and preparing for a game properly, all right, so that they're not sort of caught off guard or surprised when they see things in the game and, you know, understanding that, hey, guys, we're practicing this stuff because this is what you're going to see. This is what you need to, to anticipate when they're in these receiver locations and they're running these kinds of motions. So you shouldn't be surprised by it. And I think the knowledge and experience has been very helpful in helping them play with more confidence as well. We'll go to Brett Hudson. With Miller Forstall being out for a few weeks now, or limited roles, what do you think you've gotten from Jaleel Billingsley, Carl Tucker, and Kendall Randolph in bigger roles? And those guys have all done a really, really good job. I mean, they've all filled the role very nicely. Uh, Jaleel is kind of coming into his own a little bit as a tight end. Um, he's a very good receiver. I think, you know, having some success in the last couple of games has probably helped his confidence a little bit. Um, and he's, you know, definitely somebody – uh, who we feel can make plays for us on offense. And we need to try to utilize him every way that we can. Uh, but getting Carl back was was good because he was hurt for a while and Miller got hurt and Carl came back. Um, so, you know, that entire group of tight ends have kind of mixed and matched nicely all year long to uh, help us be successful in the running game and the passing game. Go to Michael Casagrande. Yeah, I know that, that it seems like Devontae Smith, he's obviously done very well recently, gotten a lot of passes, a lot of catches. Uh, how do you guys try to distribute the ball, and how do you how do you have to be creative, I guess, to, to get him the ball with defenses locking on him? Uh, well, you know, I, I think that you try to move him around uh, the best you can. Uh, I think, you know, it gets really hard to try to um, – especially in regular down situations. And I think in regular down situations is where Smitty has made a lot of his explosive plays. Um, when I say regular down situations, it's on play action pass, it's on bubbles, it's on, um, it's not really third down situations. Third down situations, you have a little bit better chance, I think, when you know it's gonna be a pass to try to take somebody out of the game. Um, if that's what you, you know, the question that you're asking me, uh, so the fact that we move him around a lot and uh, he's a smart guy, he can play all the positions, uh, which is very helpful because, you know, some guys that you have playing receiver, it's almost like the defensive back. Some guys can just play corner. They can't play anything else. You know, some guys can just play split end or X receiver, as we call it. You know, other guys can only play Z or the flanker position. All right. But in Smitty's case, because he can play H, he can play X, he can play Z, I mean, we can move him all over the place. So that really makes it hard for the defense to um, track the guy and make adaptations and changes relative to formations, especially when you're in run pass situations, which is regular down type stuff. So uh, I think Sark does a really good job of moving guys around and utilizing the personnel so that, you know, we can get the playmakers the ball. Uh, that's always you know, been something that uh, has been really important to us. We'll go with Jeff Spiegel. Nick, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but but you've got a pretty good record when it comes to these revenge games. I, I wonder, as a coach, in your experience, how powerful of a motivator is revenge when it comes to playing a football game? Well, to be honest with you, um, I never try to use that – as a motivating factor. Um, you know, every season is different. Every team is different. Um, but do I think it is a motivating factor with individuals and players? Uh, I absolutely think it is. I think that, you know, awareness of what happened in last year's game and all that is always something that, um, you know, players remember, think about how they felt, you know, after a, of the game last year or whatever. Uh, and um, I do think it's a motivating factor. Now, as I said, I usually don't try to use that, you know, I, because in our case, and I don't want to sound facetious here, but we only have a few of those where we can, you know, sort of look at last year or the year before or whatever and say what happened was an issue or a problem. Um, but but I, I think that, you know, nobody likes to get disrespected. And I think when you, you lose a game, you feel that way to some degree. And um, I think it's human nature to try to make it right. So 
Uh, I, I do think that that is a motivating factor for most human beings. We'll go with Aaron Suttles. Nick, uh, Jaleel Billingsley is, is sort of a new age tight end, a guy with, with wide receiver skills. And as you mentioned earlier, LSU has one of those guys in Eric Gilbert. How do those type players stress a defense? Well, I, I think that, you know, I've always said this before, that tight ends are really – difficult mismatch guys because of who ends up covering them most of the time. Um, you know, you, you got your best corners covering the wide receivers, uh, but when these guys are lined up close to the core and their run pass options uh, are more difficult to define, you know, relative to how they line up and who ends up covering them and who ends up matching up on them. Um, I've always said that, you know, tight end and a great running back, that's hard to cover. You know, those guys are, you know, mismatch problems because unless you put six defensive backs in there, you're not going to have cover guys on them. You're going to have guys that you're probably putting on the field uh, because they're good at stopping the run and other things, uh, which that linebacker position is really critical. So um, I, I think, those types of guys really create lots of problems, uh, you know, for defense. And um, we certainly had some issues with them, you know, this year ourselves. And, uh, you know, this guy that LSU has is a really good player. Charlie Potter. Hey, Coach. Uh, just having watched film of LSU's offense, how do you think they'll look different without Terrace Marshall on the field? Uh, I don't really think, you know, Terrence Marshall is really a good player. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him and um, he's got great size and great hands and he's very instinctive as a player. Uh, so I, I don't mean to be, you know, like glib about the fact that he's not going to play uh, because he is a great player. But I do think that they have other skill guys um, that are very, very good as well. Some of them maybe not as experienced as you know Terrence Marshall, but um, so I, I, I don't I don't know that they'll do a lot of things differently. Um, you know, it's it's really kind of hard to change years at this you know station in the season. You're trying to always kind of develop an identity of who you are and what you can do well. Um, and I think when these guys have clicked on all cylinders, you know, they score 30 points a game, they can be a pretty good offensive team. Um, so, and I do think they have enough skilled players that they can still, you know, have plenty of guys to make plays. So I don't, we don't, you never know for sure, anticipate that they'll do things a whole lot different. Okay, we will finish up with uh, Kirk McNair. Go ahead, Kirk. Kirk, we can't hear you. You're muted. I can't Sorry. hear you. There you go. Okay, we're still having problems with Kirk. We're going to go to James Ogletree. Finish yeah. up here. Coach, Chris Allen is a, a guy who may not be the quote-unquote biggest name or get the most publicity on your defense, but he leads the team in tackles for loss, and the coaches have chosen him as one of the defensive players of the week several times. What is it about his game that you like and what kind of progress have you seen him make this year? Well, I think our two outside backers have both made a lot of progress this year. And uh, I think they sort of contribute um, to us playing better on the edges, uh, to have a little better pass rush. Um, you know, Chris has got great size. He's got power. Um, I think he's playing with a lot more confidence now. Uh, I think it was a guy that was a little unsure at times of exactly what was expected of him. And, you know, sometimes when guys are like that, they're afraid to pull the pin um, and actually do what they know they're supposed to do. And I think once players mature, you know, past that and develop the confidence that, hey, this is the way I can make plays. I got to trust it. I got to believe it. I got to go do it. This is what, you know, the coach asked me to do. And this is what I'm supposed to do in this scheme of things to be able to make plays, then I think you start seeing production. And I think that's definitely what's happened with Chris. He's had really good production all year long, but you know, both of our outside backers really have done a good job for us this year. Kurt, try one more time. See if we've got your audio. Kurt. 
And we still don't have it. Coach, that's all we've got today. Kirk, I'm sorry. We'll get this figured out next time. Coach, thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, guys.